The next thing that people ask me is like, I'm in bronze. How do I carry my teammates? Like, how do I carry my shit ADC? Or I'm in silver. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, what 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 are some tips? Like, I I get asked this so many times. Like, what tips do you have for climbing support? Like, I hate this question because there is no answer to it other than just get good. Like, it really is just that. Like, it's not me trying to be lazy and trying to be like I mean bitch and be like just get good forehead. It literally is just that. Like the difference between a bronze and a silver player is that the silver player just does everything better. They ward better. They roam better. They play their characters better. They have better mechanics. It's literally everything. It's not one isolated thing. It's not like, oh, oh, just ward here and then you'll be challenger. Or, oh, just, 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 just poke them a bit and you know, you'll be challenger in no time. Like it's everything, everything like it's everything. Like they're just better at everything. Like what's the difference between a silver and a gold player? A gold player just does everything better, which means just get good, lol. Like there isn't any isolated thing that would just help anyone. Like, and it could be like even the most random things that could help you better. Like there might be someone that's really bad at warding, but maybe they're mechanically really good and can play like really good hook characters. I don't know. But then maybe there's another player that's really good at roaming and really good at warding and playing around the map, but maybe they're mechanically really shit. And maybe in lane, they're kind of shit as well in lane. Who knows? Like, who's better? Like, is this person with the more mechanics better or is this person with more map um, gameplay better? Like, does this person be automatically become platinum just because his um mechanically good or this person just automatically good because he like plays around the map it's like it's everything it, it's literally just everything just like get good at everything if you want like a more practical answer other than just get good it's literally to just watch as many people that are better than you and try to analyze what they do you should be able to figure out what i do differently in my videos like how i ward how i move around how i do it whatever like you should be able to just like watch um, people and f just see differences. Um, obviously you might not pick up on every nuance, but over time in my videos, I do explain things, um, over time. So, you know, it's not possible for me to just unleash a whole essay onto you and be like, these are everything you need to know. Like it just comes and goes within like whatever games, um, you can read guys if you want. Um, sometimes there are VOD reviews you can do, but if someone is asking like tips on getting good, I know they're expecting a very short answer. And I'm just here to say like, it's not possible, bitch. It's, it's not possible. Like, how do I know what you're good at? And how do I know what you're bad at to give you like a one line answer? Like this, this ain't like no Zimzilla Bim shit. Like I'm not going to be able to say like some magical sentence that will magically like make you climb f higher or like magically make you play better like it doesn't it's not possible okay it's not possible like you you kind of need to put in the work to play the game limit test like instead of focusing on your teammates being like oh my god my bronze adc was always so bad like bitch you're also bronze okay you're a bronze support like don't be acting like it's your adc that's bringing you down like because i 100 percent know for sure if i were to watch your vod I would roast you, roast the fuck out of you, okay? So some of you are being really confident, being like, it's just my, you know, my ADC is like, I'm Saraka and I just, you know, my my bronze ADCs just can't carry me and they're always feeding, like, I don't know what to do. It's like, just play better, just do stuff better. Um, limit test, okay? Some of you do not try to limit test. So limit testing means to, well, push the limit, to try things out. For example, like if you know that this dive is sketchy, but you're not too sure, just go for it. Just go for the dive. Um, if you win the dive, then you know that, oh, okay, next time this dive, if it's in a similar, the next time I come across a similar situation, I know that this dive is possible and this dive is winnable. If you fail, then you could either be like, okay, let me see. Was this dive like really totally bad and I should not have gone for it? If so, what were the reasons? Or was this dive just bad because of execution? Like the idea was there and we were really close, but we just executed it bad. So I, I need to think about like how to execute things better, right? That's limit testing. So keep on trying things. Some some of you are really too scared to ch like try. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna use like one of my friends for an example. My friend plays a lot of Ash 
ADC. I play with him in normals and I'm always telling him just shoot your arrow, bitch. Just shoot your freaking arrow off cooldown. Like go, go, go. But he's always too scared to shoot out his arrow. But because he's so scared to shoot out his arrow, he never can learn that like you can just get a kill because he's too scared. Like I don't want to shoot my arrow. I'm too scared. Like I don't want to miss blah, blah, blah. It's like, well then how will you ever learn? How are you ever going to learn if you can get this kill or if you, how like learn if you're going to land this arrow or not. Right. So to just limit us, watch people play, try to see what they do. Like these YouTubers, streamers, whatever, what they do, how they do it. Um, again, it's not, not one isolated thing. Okay. I mean, if you want to look at one isolated thing, sure, you can always just Google like how to ward better or whatever. But at the end of the day, just because you watch 10,000 videos on how to ward better doesn't mean you're automatically going to be challenged because there's thousands and thousands of other skill sets that contribute to you winning. Oh yeah, uh, I wasn't going to include this, but it just came into my head. Some of you really want to do it. And if I'm going to be really quite honest, doing is not a good way to climb. Because at the end of the day, one person is going to be better than the other. And one person is going to be worse than the other. You're either going to be the worst player that's getting carried, and that person then is suffering because they're trying to carry you. Or you're the better person trying to carry that person, and that person is getting carried by you. Because the, the thing about solo queue is that it's not about winning every single game. That's not the point of solo queue. It does not matter if I lose 10 games in a row. It doesn't matter if I lose 10 games in a row. Why? Because if I win 15 games in a row, then I make up. I make up five um, net wins, right? It's about having a higher win rate than 50%. You just got to win more than you lose. It doesn't matter if you lose 1,000 games, if you win 1,100 games. Some people are going to have a harder road, obviously, because you lose out on time and time is, you know, time is money or your time is like, you know, precious. Um, and you probably lose, lose out on your sanity, right? But like solo queue is not about winning every single game. And so when you play solo queue and you have random teammates, yeah, sure, you might lose like some games because like this random teammate is feeding and that maybe the enemy team just got really fed or they have a smurf on the enemy team or whatever. Like that does happen, but it shouldn't matter because at the end of the day, you are also going to have smurfs on your team or the enemy team is also going to have feeders or ragers and blah, 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 blah. But when you do it with someone, you have someone that's always going to be with you. When you do it with someone, you are constantly with someone. If they are worse than you, you are always going to have that same person with the same bad mistakes, with the same bad habits. Now, if you're with someone good, then obviously that same person is going to carry you or whatever, but then you might be the, the bad player that that person is trying to have to deal with. Like that other person might have to deal with you constantly doing the same bad mistakes or bad habits. Now, if you're doing some wacky doodle shit in bot lane, like, I don't know, Yumi Ranka or like what, Tarek Masayu, then go for it, all right? Then, then go for like those weird combos. But if you're like you know, just asking some random person on your friends list or whatever, like, hey girl, like, I want to play some duos and you want to come join me or whatever, like, the reality is one person is going to be worse than the other. If you can't climb to a certain rank by soloing, you don't deserve that rank and you won't perform well. If someone does not deserve Diamond 4 and they do it all the way to Diamond 4, they have all the bad habits of a platinum player, but whilst being in a diamond four game or whatever. And one of the duos is gonna is dealing with that, right? So if you really wanna climb just solo, doing is more for your sanity. Like if I do it with someone, I more do it on a Smurf account, on a other account. I don't really take the game too seriously, but if I were to take it like that seriously and climb, I would do it on a Smurf account and do it. And let, the only time I ever like do it on my main account is if I'm doing with someone that is like, I know is better than me and higher ranked, which of course means I know I'm the worst player. I'm the one dragging them down, but we're kind of usually like that other person is going to be Smurfing, right? That other person is Smurfing because they know that they would have to come down a notch for me. If anyone's wondering, you can't do it in Masters Plus. So um, once you get to Masters, you can only solo. 
So yes, I did solo my, my way to Grandmaster if anyone is wanting to come for me. I did get to Grandmaster with Soraka by myself. How do you deal with Grievous Wound Soraka? You play my Soraka movement speed build. Oh, okay. Actually, I need to say this. Um, I do a lot of build videos. I've made my Karma video. I've made my Morgana video. I made my movement speed Soraka video. I make all these videos. And if you are truly wanting to learn and you like have the time and not which by the way I, i'm sure all of you have the time like bitch we play league of legends if you really want to learn the most important part of my videos in my soraka videos or whatever so this is a soraka video that started everything I this was a soraka video that started everything if you, you can just go to my twitch channel and type in exclamation mark soraka in the chat or you can just manually search for this video so it's a one hour video if you're truly wanting to learn um, these builds and all that stuff. The most important part of this video is not the gameplay. It's not all this full gameplay. It's not this montage. It's the explanation, which is st like starts normally at the start of my videos or close to the start of my videos around here. Like I'm just made the video, but I do an explanation. I talk about the build for six minutes seven minutes six minutes or whatever that's the most important part of the video it doesn't matter if you don't watch if you don't have the time to watch the gameplay who the fuck cares about the gameplay it's the explanation that matters if you if people if people watch that explanation they would know how to counter and to heal on soraka they would know like the answer to like oh which one's better moonstone or movement speed or blah blah blah, blah. they would understand i also get keep getting asked like Oh, now that Shirelis gets nerfed or got nerfed, um, it, do we still go Shirelis Soraka? Of course you do, because the, the point of my movement speed Soraka is not just because I want movement speed and that's it. Like, that, if you watch the explanation, I go through the problems of Moonstone. Just because Shirelis gets nerfed, you don't go back to Moonstone. Because if you go back to Moonstone, then you have all the problems that came along with Moonstone. Like the Shirelia's changes is irrelevant to Moonstone Soraka. You still have problems on Moonstone Soraka that I explained in the in the explanation. Which is she dies. Okay. She just fucking dies. Who gives a fuck if Shirelia gets nerfed and is a little weaker? Because like would you rather be living and surviving or would you rather have movements? Would you rather go moonstone and die? And like, which one would you want? So if I ever make any more of these build videos, which by the way, I'll be making a Nami video probably soon, like a Nami build, the explanation is the most important part. If you really care to learn. Going back onto the Dong Huap and Happy Chime Noises channel, um, and this is in reference to people that are asking me like what is the meta champion but this also relates to how to get better it does not matter if you don't play any of these characters it does not matter if you're a luli one trick it does not matter if you're a seraphin one trick and you're like oh my god lisa is ugly and i'm, ne I'm never gonna touch lisa it doesn't matter you will and can learn from watching this Leeson video. You can learn from this Kogma video. You can learn from this Vega video. You can learn from this Trinomia video. Why? Because these videos, because there's such an emphasis on the theory behind these builds, it obviously means there are gonna be like fundamental skills and theories that apply to anything, no matter what champion you play. And so knowing some of that knowledge will help with your gameplay. And on top of that, you're probably versing Leeson. You're probably versing Trinamia. You're probably versing Kogmo. You're probably going to benefit from some of the stuff. You win with knowledge. Having more knowledge on the enemy champions or whatever, obviously it's going to be a benefit. So if you're truly serious about learning, uh, yeah, expand your horizon. Maybe try even try out some of these characters. And if you don't really care about these characters, at least look up some videos on these characters or like um, digest the knowledge like watching videos or when you play burst them understand stuff um not like just passively like oh i got chopped down by trinomia and that's it like i guess trinomia is op like i don't know how to beat a trinomia he just he just presses his R and like i die like understand like what is trinomia's strengths and his weaknesses when you're versing him so yeah um that's that should be about it i think that's about it